Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to St. Paul's Church on this third Sunday of the Easter season. We begin our worship together by singing together hymn 492. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, the children rejoicing, The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, 
Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold Him in all His redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated. The first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks Thanks be to to God. The response appointed for this morning is Psalm 4. We will read it verse by verse. I will read the odd-numbered verses, and the congregation is invited to read the even-numbered verses. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble Tremble then, then, and and do do not not sin. sin. Speak Speak to your your heart heart in silence silence upon your bed. bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices, and put your trust in the Lord. Many Many are saying, Oh, that that we might see see better better times. times. Lift up up the light of your countenance upon upon us, O Lord. Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, yet once I fall asleep, for only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. 
Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord. Lord Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. 
you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of our risen God, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, on this. <clears throat> sun was out, then it's raining, now the sun's out again. Uh, but I see by my wonderful weather forecaster that more rain is coming about noon. Well, that's the way it is in this time of year. Today is the third Sunday in the Easter season. We remember in our liturgical year that Easter has a number of Sundays. Uh, can anyone tell me uh, how many Sundays there are in Easter this year? Uh, now I, I tell you the truth, I couldn't myself without looking. So, Easter is one of these variable seasons. It all depends on the day of Easter, and seeing that Easter came relatively early this year, it means we're going to have a long Easter season up until Pentecost. So there's probably going to be six or seven Sundays in Easter. This, however, today is the last Sunday that the Gospel talks anything about the resurrection appearances of Jesus. Uh, so I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. The Gospel today is from Luke. Remember, we are in the Gospel of Mark this year, but remember also that Mark is the shortest of the Gospels, so we, gotta have, we have to fill in some of the things because Mark is so short. Today we're using Luke, uh, but for the, pretty much for the rest of the Easter season, I think it's going to be the Gospel of John, which is a totally different kind of thing, as, as we all know. So, today we deal with Luke. Remember also, please, that Luke wrote the book of the Acts of the Apostles. So it's really one continuous story from Luke, from, from the beginning of the story of, of the Bethlehem uh, birth of Jesus all the way through to the end of the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, Luke, uh, we don't know for sure how he figures into this, but scholars think that Luke was a, a disciple of St. Paul. Luke, of course, was not a disciple. He, didn't, he was not one of the twelve. Everything that Luke knows, he heard from someone else. So in that respect, Luke is very much like all of us. Uh, we have heard the gospel story from someone else at some time. But like all of the gospel writers, Luke had a, a, a couple particular slants to the gospel. He wrote with uh, what we would say today, an agenda. Uh, and, and the agenda involves at least two things. One is, and, and this is really important, that the whole story of Jesus was of one piece with the whole sweep of Scripture, starting clear back with Adam and Eve, going through the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, uh, all of the prophets, all of the history of Israel, King David, King Solomon, the disintegration of the kingdom. Uh, the, from 2,000 years of history, Luke sees as one continuous thread. And, and remember also, of course, that Jesus being Jewish, being brought up in the synagogue, uh, was part of that story uh, in, in Luke. And, and according to Luke, Jesus is the fulfillment of that very same story. And this, this gives me great comfort, because as I think I've mentioned to you, I, I, I love to read about what's going on with the Jews in the Old Testament. Uh, about some, some 60 years ago when I was in, in seminary, uh, I read a book which kind of changed my, my life in many ways. And it was, a, some of you probably would have read one paragraph and put it down, uh, but it was the history of the Jewish people, the history of Israel, which I found fascinating. And over the past 60 years, probably about every eight or 10 years, I've got out that book and reread it. And every time I read it, I, I see something else. 
and it all reinforces this idea that Jesus did not come from a vacuum. Uh, Jesus came out of the out of the Old Testament period. He was, as even the Jews and the, and the Muslims say today, Jesus was a prophet. Of course, we Christians say that Jesus was so much more than a prophet. He was as close to the revelation of God as we humans could get. But this, this was the first of, of Luke's emphasis, that Jesus was part of this whole tradition, and to really understand what Jesus was teaching, you need to understand the law and the prophets. And, and Luke does that in the book of Acts, bit by bit. He rehearses that history. The, the second slant that the Gospel of Luke has uh, is, is uh, more, I think, more interesting for most of us because it has to deal with food. Uh, Luke always has, in the Gospels, remember, Jesus is always eating with somebody. Uh, the problem for the Jews was that Jesus oftentimes ate with the wrong people. You know, he ate with all of these, these uh, down and outs in society, the, the, the tax collectors, God forbid, uh, the prostitutes, God forbid, uh, people who didn't uh, wash their hands before every meal in exactly the prescribed way, God forbid. Jesus hung around with these people, and, uh, and that's really how he aroused the enmity of, of the Jewish leaders, plus these outrageous comments that he would make, if you want to know what God looks like, just look at me. I mean, this would just drove the Jewish leaders crazy, and, and that's really the reason why they decided they had to do him in. So the, the second emphasis of, of Luke is food. And in the gospel stories, uh, both last week and today, remember last week was the road to Emmaus, that wonderful story that only is in Luke's gospel. And today this story, uh, which is repeated in different ways by the other gospels, even in the gospel of John, uh, the gospel today dealing with this is all on Easter Day. This is all on the day of Jesus' resurrection, remember. Uh, and, and the disciples were terrified. And remember, we, we read that they were, they were locked up in the upper room. They, were, they, they, they couldn't breathe. They were so, they were so fearful that the, the temple authorities were going to come for them, and God only knows what would happen then. So in both these stories, though, remember there's food involved in, this, in the road to Emmaus, uh, I don't want to rehearse that story now because we just heard it last week. But Jesus appears incognito, and, and they only realized who Jesus was in the breaking of bread. That was the story of the gospel. Uh, and there's, uh, there's five or six different sermons or more just in that one, in that one thought. But, you know, when we think for a minute, and, and think with me, uh, how is it? that we meet Jesus in the breaking of bread. Now, this, is, this is something that not only happened some 2,000 years ago on the day of the resurrection, this is something that I have experienced in my life, and I'm pretty sure that you have too, when you stop to think about it. How, or have you thought when you're sitting down and breaking bread with someone, have you ever thought that, that you are really looking at someone who God created as a unique individual and see in that person uh, the face of God? This is maybe, maybe a strange idea, but it, it has occurred to me from time to time. And it's, uh, it's, uh, I, feel, I feel good when I, when I feel that way. I wish I felt that way more often uh, because sometimes we're put off by all the stuff that the world puts in front of us and we don't see that. But all of these stories of Jesus about food have to do with recognizing Jesus in the common meal. And this is, this is true from the very beginning of the church. Remember the first disciples gathered together at a meal. In the Gospel today, uh, which is, comes right after the story of the road to Emmaus, Jesus again appears to the disciples in this upper room where they were locked in, this same story that is all of the Gospels in a little different way. And, and Jesus shows up, and, and, and the disciples, again, are terrified. They're, they don't know what to think, because as yet, he has not appeared to most of them. This is the first time that they have seen Jesus. 
Uh, they heard some rumors that he was alive from some women who, you know, were sort of unreliable. You know how women are. They, 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 so they start these stories and they, they just keep spreading. Uh, and they had heard that, but, but they, you know, they were pretty skeptical. So here, here Jesus comes and stands right. And, and they, they must have been absolutely terrified, uh, frightened out of their wits. Uh, that they, so as you just heard me read, they thought he was a ghost. Uh, I guess ghosts were very much alive in those days as for some people they are today. And, and Jesus was very, very anxious to dispel that idea. And he says, no, I'm not a ghost. Look, look, here are my hands. Uh, you, you can see for yourself. It's in another gospel that, that he tells Thomas to put his finger in the wound. That's not Luke. In Luke, in, in Luke, Jesus says, uh, I'm hungry. As Jesus, you know, Jesus was often hungry. Uh, not only was Jesus often hungry, his disciples were always hungry. And in reading between the lines of the New Testament, they were always walking into somebody's house, like Mary and Martha, for instance, saying, we're hungry, we need food. And then somebody, would, a woman, of course, would scurry around and, and get food for this this group of 12 or 13 or 14, probably some other hangers-on. And they were always being fed by somebody. Uh, this is reading kind of between the lines. But food, so here's Jesus standing in front of them and says, I'm hungry. What do you have to eat? And, and he sees a fish, and he says, uh, I'd like a piece of fish, please. So he sits and, 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 and chomps down this fish. Right then the disciples were kind of, kind of beginning to get the picture, you know. They, 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 they were, maybe they were taking a breath. They were still incredulous. But here was, here was Jesus eating a fish. Now, this is the other, one of the other thrusts of the Gospel of Luke, uh, to, in, in addition to food, that Jesus, and, and this gets into some pretty, pretty deep theology, uh, which goes way beyond any human understanding, to be sure, that, that Jesus, in this story, appears to, to have a physical body, and he sits and eats a piece of fish. Luke was very concerned to, to, to let his followers know in the early church that the resurrection really was true, and that there really was a body there. Because in the early church, and even today, even today, there's an idea that Jesus just kind of appeared as a kind of a spirit, uh, that, that, that he wasn't really there. It was some kind of apparition that, that was there. Uh, but as far as I know, apparitions don't eat fish uh, in that or some of the other accounts. And, and Luke was bending over backwards to, to show that Jesus was really there in some kind of physical body. Now, the problem is, you know, when we've talked about this many times before, there aren't many stories of Jesus' body after his resurrection body. Uh, and they all are different. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have slightly different takes on this body that Jesus had. And, and in, this, in this Lucan account, Jesus eats fish. On the story last week, the road to Emmaus, he ate whatever those two other guys, or one of them might have been a woman for all we know, those two disciples on, on the road to Emmaus. Uh, so uh, he had obviously had a physical body. Other accounts of the resurrection, you know, Jesus appears behind closed locked doors. He tells Mary not to touch him, not to touch him because he had not yet ascended to the Father. So when we look at these resurrection stories, we're, we're kind of really in a quandary because they don't, they don't mesh. You know, they don't all add up to the same thing. And this, uh, I've just come to the conclusion myself, you can think about this in your own way, uh, that there are many ways to experience Jesus. There were then and there are now. Uh, obviously, Jesus can never be us in physical form. This all happened 2,000 years ago but he certainly appears to many people in some other kind of form. So these resurrection stories, we just have to take them as they are and, and, and try, well, that's, that was the disciple, early disciples' experience of Jesus. But Luke was very, very specific in saying that 
if you really want to experience Jesus, number one, study the scriptures. It all makes sense if you, the whole Old Testament stories, as we call them, as our Jewish friends would say, this, just the scripture, the Torah. If you want to make sense of, of our Christian reality, you've got to know the whole sweep of the story from the beginning all the way through and see that Jesus just came as a reformer to try and get the Jewish people back on the right track uh, because they had gone off in astray, as we would say, <laughs> in pretty much the same way as we all go astray uh, more often than we would like to think. So you understand the whole sweep of it. You understand who Jesus is. That's the first. And the second is this table fellowship. And obviously this story of the road to Emmaus uh, and even the gospel today, Jesus eating this fish, are a, a form, kind of form of Eucharist. Uh, this, is, this is what all the Eucharist is. It's a fellowship meal that we all do in, in our following Jesus. We meet when, whenever we meet, whenever we meet with friends or family and sit down, we are recreating kind of a Eucharist. Uh, in, in the setting this morning here, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious. We have a beautiful church. We have altars that are, are beautifully prepared by the altar guild. We have wonderful music from the choir. Uh, but it still comes down to we are here to, to, to partake of the body and blood of Jesus, which has been the form of Eucharist for 2,000 years. So as we, as we uh, come forward to the altar shortly, receive this think please think about these these early disciples and and how how frightened they were and the realism you know these stories people say oh this stuff is all this woo stuff it's all off in the clouds but when you stop to think about it the bible is pretty realistic in in, in what was going on in the minds of the disciples on that easter day before they had experienced the risen lord they were terrified they, they thought everything was lost. Uh, they didn't know what they were going to do with their lives. They, they, they didn't know which end was up, as we would, we would say today. And into this comes Jesus, breathing this spirit of, of, of love, of acceptance, and sitting down with them and, and having, having some kind of meal. And in that meal, they recognized who Jesus was. So how do we... How do we find God? How do, I find, how do you find God? Luke suggests to us in, the gospel, in his gospel and the book of Acts that we find God by first understanding the whole sweep of our religious history, our background, who we are. This is our history, uh, the, whole, the whole of the Old Testament. To understand that and to see that Jesus is in fact the fulfillment of everything that the prophets had hoped for. And secondly, when we sit down with friends, when we sit down for a common meal, to think of Jesus and how, how the disciples first experienced him in the breaking of bread. Amen. We continue by reciting the articles of our faith as contained in the Creed on page 4 of the bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him there were things made by the power of the vision of heaven and the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate to the Virgin Mary and was made man. On the third, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hallelujah. What was dead shall live. What was dark shall shine. What was forgotten shall be remembered. For the Lord is risen and walks among us. Let us confidently bring before God the needs of all our world, asking God for renewal, saying, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. God of life, in gratitude and great joy, we laud you for the gifts of Christ's resurrection. Give us hope, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Honoring the gift of Christ's risen body, may we rise to serve all those whose needs keep them from seeing themselves as the image of God, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, for all our brothers and sisters, that death may have no more power over us, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who suffer and all who mourn, that the Lord God will wipe away all their tears. We remember especially Rocio Agatara Hara, who passed away, and whose family has asked for our prayers. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May we be one faith with all who have died in Christ. For our life is hid with Christ in God. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. God of life, we thank you for the mystery planted in us, the paradox of life from death and community from scattered disciples. We praise you for the dying which saves us from death and for the rising which brings us life. We pray as we live through Jesus, the risen one, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Hello, I'm Miles Sexton. I'm a member of your vestry, and I'm here to do the announcements. You know, I've been working in the broadcasting business for a long time. <laughs> and, um, and after all that time, certain crafts of the trade stick with you, like, like writing a promo teaser for a newscast. I thought it might be fun if we applied that to our announcements. <laughs> now, I'm used to working with a teleprompter, but I'll try my best at this. Coming up, Coffee Hour follows church service. St. Paul's Choir selling t-shirts. Baptism opportunities coming up May and November. Donation of books needed. Little free library. Outreach project needs reading glasses and socks. Volunteers needed for family to family. Food prep. St. Paul's Men's Group invites new participants. Earth Day Potluck and Prayers Coming, April 22. April Fundraiser, Topper's Pizza, Tuesday, April 23. First Monday Book Club, May 6, 5.30, Zoom. <laughs> In finance, taxes due tomorrow. In sports, Masters final round today. And in weather, it's raining. <laughs> Details in the bulletin, film at 11. <laughs> so moving on to other news, we have a couple of fun things to take a little closer look at. Mother's Day brunch is coming up on May 12th, and some of you signed up last week, others uh, weren't here last week, so today's your opportunity to sign up. It'll be on, weather permitting of course, it'll be on the patio with lots of great things, kicking off with some sparkling wine and mimosas, and then a buffet lunch prepared by the men's group and the choir, because this is also a fundraiser for the choir. And uh, so I'll be, I was going to be on the labyrinth, but I think I'll probably be down in Kaler Hall <laughs> for additional sign-ups. Um, and speaking of the choir, we're going to bring in our field reporter, Felix Eisenhower, who's embedded with the choir. <laughs> oh, here. What's round, neon green, and holy? No, that's your cue. I don't know. What is round, neon green, and holy? Okay, let's try it one more time. What's round, neon green, and holy? Whoa. Thank you, thank you. This works much better if you participate. It must be a pickleball. Mm -hmm. Now, what does a pickleball have to do with church? Because it's not mentioned in the Old Testament. It is not <laughs> mentioned in the New Testament. It's not mentioned in the Psalms. It's not mentioned in the hymns. There's actually no mention of pickleball anywhere in any scripture. You can look it up. You'll have to stay tuned to find out. In other news, we are going on tour soon. That is why we are here. We are leaving June 19th. We'll be gone through June 25th. We were originally going to go to Italy and Switzerland um, due to a variety of factors. We had to leave out the Switzerland portion. We're just concentrating on Italy, but that doesn't impact the reason this tour came into being. Um, the reason this tour came into being is because there is a choir festival in Rome. We will be singing at the St. Francis Basilica in Assisi and at the Vatican in Rome. And as part of that, we will get to work with uh, the choir's favorite composer, Elaine Hagenberg. Um, she is a uh, relative to most composers we sing. A, she's alive, she is young, she's an American, she's a female composer, and um, you've heard many works from her. So we will be singing, um, the, the whole program will be centering around a new master work she wrote called Illuminare, but we will be singing several other works of hers. Um, so if you're not going on tour, don't worry, you've actually heard a lot of them. Um, if you were with us for Easter, you heard her Alleluia that the choir sang for Offertory. And if you are still around in five minutes, you will get to hear the choir sing her I Will Be a Child of Peace for Offertory today. Um, we have about, we'll get final numbers, because um, in addition to our financial update, right, tomorrow taxes are due, very exciting. Also very exciting is that tomorrow is the final payment for the tour, um, which we are on track to make with all of our fundraising. Um, so I'll have final numbers in a week or two when I check in with our tour guide, but we have about 27 people going. We have 13 from the choir, and then we have about another 14 joining us, two who are actually coming along to sing as well, and then the others are children, spouses, family, and friends of the choir who are all coming along. Um, and with that, now you get to find out what pickleball has to do with all of this. Um, Tara will talk about our fundraising and how we've been able to make all this happen. 
You all remember Nadia Becker, mm. our ASL signer? So she had a grand idea on how we could make some good money fundraising, and that was through pickleball tournaments. And it turned out Nadia Becker's quite smart. And luckily, we had her endearing support during uh, our process of putting on two pickleball tournaments. And so through those fundraisers of pickleball, we raised a decent amount of money. Um, choir members also helped out with some of the logistics of the day of. Um, I put together all sorts of planning of how to bring in the money and where it goes and all those kinds of, you know, background things. And so we want to thank Nadia very, very much because honestly, without her, we would not be in the, in the situation we're in right now where we'd be able to go on the tour. So um, thank you, Nadia Becker. She's not here today, but and then also we had a lot of different private donors, many of which were from the church, which we give our endearing thanks. And we also had a couple grants that came through that with Jordan Daniel's help, she helped apply for these grants, some of which were through the Episcopal Church. And so we, we had a couple grants that, that brought in some money as well. And then, of course, we have this wonderful fundraiser that the Meds Group is putting on for our Mother's Day brunch. We thank you so much for all your support, and we are very excited to Hello. In preparation for the tour, uh, we're starting to continue um, learning the music and being able to highlight it for you whenever possible during church services, of course. And we will put together a nice montage video while we're there and, and put that together uh, at a coffee hour to, after, after the, the case. So if you have any other questions, let us know. But thank you so much. No, oh, thank you. So um, with the fundraiser, with the men group, men's group helping out with the Mother's Day, um, that should actually give us all the funds that we need to be able to go on the tour. Um, the reason for the fundraising was um, one of our first things we said when we decided to go on the tour was that everyone in the choir who wants to go is going to go regardless of their ability to pay. We know this is a big expense, right, to be able to do this, especially for some of our younger members. Um, so it was very important for us that everyone has this opportunity. Um, so. I mean, thank you and thank everyone else. Um, after our Mother's Day brunch, we should uh, be able to pay for everything we need. So that includes our tour payment tomorrow. Um, it covers most of what we need to do, but not everything. Transportation to the airport, there's some meals that aren't provided for. Other incidentals, I mean, it's an international trip. What could possibly go wrong? Um, so. <laughs> Yes, but with this, we should be able to cover everything, so thank you everyone for your support. It's going to be a wonderful trip. Um, I can say that with 100% confidence, because it's the first tour Tara and I are leading. So with 100% confidence, I can state, up until now, we have never lost anyone on a choir tour. So we are in good shape. Thank you so much for your support. By the way, the pricing on the Mother's Day brunch I'll have for you next week. Once we get a head count, then we can figure out the costs and we'll pass it on, but we'll keep it nominal, but we'll throw in a little extra there just to help the choir out. And one last story, so in the news business, we would call this the kicker, the little story at the end uh, that's kind of fun and uplifting, and this one is to remind you to be here next Sunday, April 21st, when Reverend Vicki Meradian will pay her first visit to us, and she'll deliver a sermon and preside and she'll be returning at least one Sunday a month during this time of transition for us. So, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Miles, for a lot, a lot going on here, and, and thanks to all of you who have helped the choir so much. I, I uh, have to say one, one other thing about this meeting Jesus in food. It, it seems to be obsessing me these days. How, uh, the, the best example of, of what a Eucharist can do that I know of is uh, in a movie called Babette's Feast. Have, how, how many of you have seen Babette's Feast? It's, uh, I think it's from about 1958. I, I, let me just give you a, a, a bare bones outline. It takes place in a very bleak place in, in Jutland, which is the east, western side of Denmark in the uh, late 1800s, and it's a story about this kind of cult, this leader, a religious pastor, who's a kind of offshoot of some kind of Lutheranism, uh, who had a group of followers, and he had two young daughters. Uh, and, and both the young daughters had suitors uh, that, that the father 
talk the young daughters into turning down so they could help his ministry. Well, the old man died, the daughters grew up, uh, and they fell on hard times. The old folks started dying. Nobody knew who was joining this. And this young woman by the name of Babette, a French woman, appeared with a letter of reference saying she needed, she needed work she, due to a political event in Paris. She had, she had left Paris uh, under duress and under stress. Uh, so she showed up and, and looked around and saw this community was really in bad shape. It was, uh, it was, everybody was super depressed. There were petty arguments among the members of this little congregation. So she suddenly found she came into, she won a lottery of 10,000 francs. And, and she sent her nephew back to Paris with this 10,000 francs to buy all of the best food uh, that, that could possibly be, be bought. And she was going to make a dinner for this small community. Well, she did, and the food came, and it was turtle soup and all kinds of wonderful French stuff. And the only person who caught on was one of the former suitors of one of the young men who, who said, I know this food, I have tasted this food. And it, it, it turns out that this Babette had been the chef in this very famous Paris restaurant uh, and recreated that same milieu there in this wild, remote place in Denmark. Uh, but, and this is the kicker, the, the kicker is that when these people sat down to this meal, which was like a Eucharist, although there was no formal Eucharist, they began to, to talk to each other, they began to listen to each other, and the barriers were broken down, people were forgiving, uh, slights that they had done to each other 30, 40 years in the past, and the community was not, not totally healed, but a great step forward for healing. And, and this, this all goes to show the power of, of, of what a communal meal can do when people sit down and listen. And it's, it's, it's all a prototype of the Eucharist, my friends. That's what it all is. So you can, you can, you can see this movie, Babette's Feast, I know it's on, uh, just look for it on, online. You can see it. Uh, we saw it on the Amazon thing some time ago. We saw it. Okay. A any special time for special prayers, blessings? Uh, Laura, who, we have, what do we have here? We have a, a gathering here. What's, what, what, okay, Grace, what's? We have a birthday. A birthday? Mm -hmm. for, for who? Gilbert. For Gilbert. And how old are you, Gilbert? Six. Six. Okay, Gilbert, six. Okay. And, and, and this is all the rest this of the... This is just the support. Uh, the support, the support the group. Support. The support group. <laughs> just in case Gilbert needs some support. Okay. Okay, and over here, Laura. Oh, your birthday's in five days. And, 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 and tell everybody your name. Axel. Axel. Axel's birthday is in five days. Okay, so we have, we have a birthday prayers for... Oh, and... and birthday. birthday. Okay, we have three birthdays. Uh, let me, let's, we have all the birthday people here. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Okay. This is... Uh, Offside to the left, I think. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lord, we remember before you birthdays, very important dates when we all came into being in your loving care. We ask your presence on these young people on their birthdays. Bless them on their daily activities. Keep them safe in your loving care, and above all things, may their love through their parents enlighten their lives and minds and hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Now, okay. Sarah, help. Um, so I'm up here today for a special prayer. My daughter just made one year to life. Did you hear that? Her daughter has one year of sobriety today.
Okay. And what is your daughter's name? Marianne. Marianne. Lord, we ask your blessing upon Marianne on this day. We thank you for the courage and the power that enabled her to stay sober for a year and ask your continuing presence and strength in her life that she may walk the straight path before her without stumbling. Keep her in your heart and in your love, and may we all do our part to help her on this journey. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. 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 Thank you. Okay. okay, well, happy birthday, everyone. <laughs> As the rain continues, we continue with the, the offertory. Scribe works of greatness to the Lord, bring offerings and come to the Lord's courts.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and we glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to your will, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us, to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death 
and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ through the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, preserve it in peace and grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power, and glory forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. Please join us in praying with our siblings in Christ who are with us online and receiving communion spiritually. Dearest Lord Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of the Eucharist. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we are not all together in our church today to receive the bread and wine made holy, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts, fill us with your light, and nourish us with your word and spirit. Amen. This is the banquet of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who fear you have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him in this holy way. of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Christ, the bread of heaven. Bless Lord, you have found. Bless Lord, dear daughter. Bless Lord, you have found. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And the body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ for you. Bless Lord, your daughter. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Next time. Okay. <laughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray together in the prayer of thanksgiving. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Go in the peace of the Lord Jesus. May Christ's light shine in your hearts so that you may bring the joy and the hope of Easter to others. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us go forth into, into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Sure. 